I want to do a brief recap on the price effect before we move on to inferior goods. So like I said in the last video, the price effect can be broken down into substitution effect and the income effect. And the substitution effect is the effect of a change in price on the quantity bought when the consumer reigns on the same difference curve. So we could say that we got a price cut or we could say that uh, the, the thing that we are focused on, the, the thing that we are buying, the price for that thing changed and this will have an effect on the quantity bought and to, re to re remain on the same difference curve we moved from point C to point K because well, the price for the item that we were looking at changed so to remain on the same difference curve and remain indifferent between point C and point K uh, we, we moved from C to K and this light orange line is the new budget line that we are looking at that actually manages to become the tangent line for K on the same indifference curve that we were on before the price change. And then the income effect is where uh, we could say that we got a reverse in the pay cut, our income becomes normal or we got a raise, we got more income, so that will lead us to a new indifference curve, I2, where we could buy more than we could before. And that's a quick recap on the price effect. Now we're going to go on to inferior goods. And for inferior goods, uh, when income increases, the quantity bought decreases. Kind of makes sense, does it? When you have more money, why buy the crap that you were uh, buying before when you didn't have much money? When, you, when your income increases, buy the brand name stuff. The, the good stuff, the, the thing that people looks at when you walk down the street. So the quantity bought of the inferior stuff that we were, you were buying when you were a hobo decreases. The income effect is negative and works against the substitution effect when we're talking about inferior goods. And as long as the substitution effect dominates, then the demand curve will slope downward. So, for example, the demand curve that we have right here, as long as the substitution effect dominates, then it will stay, uh, it will, the demand curve will slope downward, it will continue to slope downward. But if the negative income effect dominates, then the demand curve will actually slope upward. And that's kind of weird if you ever see it, because this never actually occurs in reality, and it shouldn't. Uh, if you see that happen in reality, then something is definitely wrong with the world. But other than that, let's move on to work leisure short choices. So, uh, the model of consumer choice can be used to study the allocation of time between work and leisure. And what I have here is a time allocation figure. Now, the two goods that we're looking at are leisure, which is on the X, and income, which is on the Y. And income represents all other goods. Now we buy leisure by not going to work, by not supplying labor, and by foregoing income. So the price of leisure is the wage we give up or the wage foregone. Now the labor supply curve is what I want to look at here. By changing the wage rate we are able to find a person's labor supply curve. Now, an increase in the wage rate makes leisure more expensive. There's a higher opportunity cost uh, to not working, and this directs the substitution effect towards less leisure, more work. This kind of makes sense, right? If your wage is, say, like $10,000 an hour versus $10 an hour, of course, you'll give up more when you don't work versus what you give up more when you don't work for that $10,000 versus uh, when you don't work for that $10, uh, $10 an hour. So an increase in the wage rate makes leisure more expensive, higher opportunity to cost more not working, and directs the substitution effect towards less leisure, more work, because you'll make more. And uh, for this graph right here, this is our indifference curves, and right now we're, our wage is $5 an hour, and uh, we apparently work from this graph, we apparently work uh, 148 hours per week and our income is $100. Or actually, I just I should say that 
reading this more carefully, the amount of leisure that we have per week is 148 hours, and our income, our dollars per week, is a hundred dollars per week. So we make, uh, I guess, like we work 20 hours per week. Sounds about right. 20 hours times five, a hundred dollars per week. Yep, sounds about right. Now, a higher wage rate has a positive income effect on leisure. If the income effect is weaker than the substitution effect, then the quantity of work hours increases as the wage rate increases. So take a look at this graph. Um, let's say that our wage rate uh, is higher now at $10, and that will have a positive income effect on leisure. Now, if the income effect is weaker than the substitution effect, the quantity of work hours increases as the wage rate increases. So that is happening here. The income effect is weaker than the substitution effect. That is why we are uh, having more or less leisure hours per week. We're only having 133 leisure hours per week and we're making more money though. We're making $680 per week. We're making uh, $350 per week so we're work actually working 35 hours a week getting mixed up with all these numbers. So when the wage rate increases from $5 to $10 an hour, work increases from 20 to 35 hours per week. And that is the move from A to B. Now let's look at when the wage rate rises some more. So if the income effect is stronger than the substitution effect, then the quantity of work hours actually decreases as the wage increases. So when the rage, when the rage, when the wage rises up from ten dollars to fifteen dollars an hour, work actually decreases from thirty-five to thirty-five or thirty-five to thirty hours per week, and that is a move from B to C. So what actually happened is our wage once again increased from ten dollars to fifteen dollars, and when that happens. How much uh, leisure we actually take is now we're taking more leisure. Before at ten dollars we were taking 133 leisure hours per week. Now at fifteen dollars we're taking 138 leisure hours per week, and we're making 450 dollars per week. Remember that the income effect is the effect of a change in income on the quantity of a good consumed. So the good in this case is leisure. So when our income uh, changes and rises, if the effect of that rise is stronger than the substitution effect in this third case, then the quantity of work decreases as the wage increases. In the second case, where the change in income uh, is, when the change in income rises, or when the change in, when there is a change in income, the in, our income rose from five to ten dollars in, in the second case, and the effect on of that change in income on on leisure was weaker than substitution effect and that is why the quantity of work hours increased as the wage uh, that is why the quantity of the work hours increased as the wage rate increased now taking all these together uh, actually I'll finish this in the next video I feel like I'm running out of time uh, please rate comment subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time thanks for watching